So brothers and sisters, I wanted to begin this khutbah by an overview of a stark contrast between the crying of shaitan and the crying of Adam alayhi salam. And it's, it's very interesting because if you think about it, the idea of shaitan crying in and of itself might shock some people. Isn't he a creature that has no remorse for what he has done? And so a person might even wonder, is that even possible for the shaitan to cry and what would cause him to cry? And with Adam alayhi salam, what is it that causes Adam alayhi salam to cry after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven him and already guaranteed him Jannah and told him that he has risen above that one slip that he, that he made that caused him to leave paradise in the first place. So why is it that shaitan would cry when shaitan is a being of no remorse? And why is it that Adam alayhi salam would cry if Adam alayhi salam has already been forgiven and assured paradise for himself? And ultimately, as we survey these narrations, the question that I want to come to is what makes us cry? And where do, I, where do we find our own resemblance in regards to the tears of these two creatures that are on opposing ends? And so you start off with Iblis, Shaytan. The Prophet said in a famous hadith in Sahih Muslim that every time the Shaytan sees the son of Adam making sujood, prostrating, i'tazala yabki, he goes to a corner and he cries, Yaqul Umira. He, he says he was commanded to make sujood, bis sujood, fasajat. And he responded, wa umirtu, fa'asayt, aw wa abayt, in another narration. He was commanded and he responded, and I was commanded and I rejected. And so if you read the narration there and you ask yourself, well, is this the remorse of shaitan that he's saying that? This person was commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prostrate and they responded and I rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what an evil creature I was or I am to continue to insist on this way. Is this a form of regret? Because the Prophet said, Nadmu tawbah. Sincere regret is repentance. It's the beginning of repentance. It is the foundation of what repentance actually is. So is this because of that? Or is this something else? And subhanAllah, there's another narration, as we often find, that gives a little bit more detail that makes it obvious as to why he was crying or why he cries when he sees one of us obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Huraira narrates an authentic narration of Ibn Majah that the Prophet said, إِذَا قَرَى بْنُ آدَمْ السَّجْدَةِ When the child of Adam reads a sajda, meaning they read a verse of prostration that causes them to prostrate. فَسَجَدَ And then they make their sajda, they prostrate, they respond to the call to bow and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. اِعْتَزَلَ الشَّيْطَانُ يَبْكِي يَقُولُ يَا وَيْلَهُ أُمِرَ بْنُ آدَمَ بِالسُّجُودِ فَسَجَدْ فَلَهُ الْجَنَّةِ وَأُمِرْتُ بِالسُّجُودِ فَأَبَيْتْ فَلِيَ النَّارِ It's only a simple addition, but it gives you so much context. That the Prophet ﷺ says that when he sees you make sujood, he says, woe to, woe to me. Ya wayla, woe to me. The son of Adam was commanded to prostrate and he responded, فَلَهُ الْجَنَّةِ And so he gets Jannah. And I was commanded to prostrate and I refused, so I get the punishment of the fire. There's something very telling about that. That shaitan is not doing anything to show remorse for his own deeds. He's upset that he's left out. He's crying not over the crime, but over the consequences of the crime that are self-inflicted. And these are the tears of a narcissist. A narcissist cries as well. But a narcissist does not cry because of the hurt that they cause to others or because of any type of regret for their deeds. They cry because they are always the victim of their own stories even when they are the criminals in their own stories. And so he's crying because he lost Jannah. Not because he disobeyed a Rabb, a Lord who should not be disobeyed. A merciful Lord who did absolutely nothing to be disobeyed. Ya abati la ta'bud shaytan inna shaytan kana lirrahman asiya when ibrahim alayhisam spoke to his father and he said oh my father do not disobey do not uh, do not worship the shaytan verily the shaytan 
was to a merciful Lord, exceedingly disobedient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give him anything for him to truly disobey him the way that he did. But he's crying over missing out on al-Jannah. What are some of the other narrations about his tears, about his actual crying? Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that shaitan cried at the revelation of Surah Al-Fatiha. Why? Because no one who asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance 17 times a day will be misguided. No one who asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his pleasure 17 times a day sincerely will attain his wrath instead. And he knows that. And it bothers him that the Muslims have this tool that they attain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with on a regular basis. A Muslim who memorizes nothing else of the Qur'an knows Surah Al-Fatiha. And so if you recite that with sincerity, that is your connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then there is a chapter in the books of Tafsir called Hina Baka Iblis. Or the ayah, the time that Iblis cried, or the ayah that caused Iblis to cry. And it's based on a narration from Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Thabit al-Bunani radiallahu ta'ala anhu that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse in Surah Ali Imran, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهِ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُوا الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يُصِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعْلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in, in, in Surah Ali Imran, and those who when they commit a sin or an injustice against themselves, a fahisha, أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ Or they wrong themselves, they remember Allah. That's the difference between sincere repentance and regret. Okay? They remember Allah. Ya Allah, I disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What right did I have to disobey Allah? Who is Allah to be disobeyed by me, His creation? Dhakarullah. Fastaghfaru li dhunubihim. Before someone else made them ashamed of their sin, or before someone else reminded them, or before they faced the consequences of their sin. And that's why. In Islam, even in, in, in the legal sense, if a person regrets before they are caught, and they have repented before they are caught, then they are to be forgiven. Right? So they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And who's going to forgive them except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? وَلَمْ يُصِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعْلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ And they don't insist on their ways knowingly. The opposite of shaitan, who continues to go down a path that he knows is a path of destruction and take as many people with him, which is also how some people start to spiral, right? They know they're doing wrong, but I'm just going to keep on going and I'll bring some people with me on this path of despair so that I'm not lonely in my destruction. And so Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Thabit narrate radiallahu anhu that this was the verse that caused Iblis to cry. This was the verse that caused Iblis to cry. Why? And that's where you find another narration that explains it. And this narration is a narration from one of the tabi'een, that uh, Ataf ibn Khalid, who says, Balaghani annahu lamma nazala, he said that it was related that when this verse was revealed, Saha Iblis bi junudihi, Iblis shouted out when this verse was revealed. And he actually started to, to put ala ra'sihi turab, hatha ala ra'sihi turab, he started to put dirt on his head, meaning he was so frustrated by this verse, when it was revealed. Until his soldiers all came to him. And they said, What is it, O oh, our master? What's causing you to scream and shout and cry? Why are you panicking the way that you are panicking? And he's saying that Allah has revealed a verse that the child of Adam no longer has to fear so long as they repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They no longer have to fear their sins so long as they repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so he was upset. I mean, this really ruins much of his plotting and his planning. And so his junood, his soldiers said to him, نَفْتَحُ لَهُمْ أَبْوَابِ الْأَهْوَاءِ We will open for them the doors of innovations and desirous ways of thinking, wishful thinking. فَلَا يَتُوبُونَ وَلَا يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ They will not seek forgiveness from you and they will not repent. وَلَا يَرَوْنَ إِلَّا أَنَّهُمْ عَلَى الْحَقِّ and they won't think except that they're doing good. Allah says, the losers 
are those who think they're doing good, but they're really doing evil. So we'll decorate practices so that they don't even realize that they're sinning because then they won't seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who would otherwise forgive them. So again, what is he crying over? He's crying over the destruction of his plans. He's crying over his own loss. Now let's contrast that for a moment to Adam alayhi salam. Adam alayhi salam, who has already been guaranteed his place back in Jannah. Think about that. Now by the way, the narrations in the books of Tafsir say that Adam alayhi salam cried for 200 years over his sin. Wabki ala khatayak. The way of the believer is indeed to cry over their sins. He cried for 200 years over his sins. He regretted deeply what he did, even after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness was assured for him. But now, Adam alayhi salam, as he's sent to this earth, all he has to worry about is what? I'm only here for a short while, then I go back to Jannah. If Adam alayhi salam was like Iblis, I'm good. I'm going right back to where I came from. I don't really have to worry about anything else, right? Look at what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said when he met Adam alayhi salam. فَلَمَّا عَلَوْنَ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا فَإِذَا رَجْلٌ عَنْ يَمِينِهِ أَسْوِدَ وَعَنْ يَسَارِهِ أَسْوِدَ قَالَ فَإِذَا, نظر فإذا نَظَرَ قِبَلَ يَمِينِهِ ضَحِكَ وَإِذَا نَظَرَ قِبَلَ شِمَالِهِ بَكَى Prophet ﷺ said, I saw this man on the night of Al-Isra' when Mi'raj, when Jibreel alayhi salam ascended with me. And he had this large group of people that were going to his right. And he had this large group of people that were going to his left. And when he looked to his right and he saw that large group of people, ضَحِكَ He laughed out of joy. And when he looked to his left and he saw this large group of people that were going to his left, Baka, he cried out of sadness. قُلْتُ يَا جِبْرِيلْ مَنْ هَذَا I said, Jibreel, who is this man? قَالَ هَذَا آدَمْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. He says, this is Adam صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَهَذِهِ الْأَسْوِدَ عَنْ يَمِينِهِ وَعَنْ شِمَالِهِ نَسَمُ بَنِيهِ He said, and these people on his right and his left are his descendants. فَأَهْلُ الْيَمِينَ أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ The people on the right are the people of paradise. And the people on the left are the Ahlul Nar, are the people of fire. So when he looks to his right, he laughs out of joy for his children. And when he looks to his left, he cries out of sadness for his children. The crying of an empath. Adam alayhi salam teaches us a different type of crying. You know, to do da'wah is also from empathy. That you want good for people in their akhirah, just like you want good for them in this dunya. It's from the same place. You want them success and salvation in the hereafter, just like you want it for yourself. The same way that in this dunya you serve people and you give to people because you want for them what you want for yourself in this dunya. That's the spirit of da'wah. And so Adam alayhi salam is teaching us the tears of a prophet. And the greatest manifestation of that is the way of our prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the authentic narration of Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhuma that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was once crying. He read the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Rabbi inna hunna adlalna kathira minan nas faman tabi'ani fa innahu minni wa man asani uh, until the end of the ayah fa inna ka anta al-azizul hakim. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Where Ibrahim alayhi salam is complaining about some of his children, some of his descendants that go astray. And the Prophet ﷺ raised his hands to the sky. قَالَ اللَّهُمَّ أُمَّتِي أُمَّتِي وَبَكَى صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ Oh Allah, my ummah, my ummah. And he started to cry sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Jibreel, idhab ila Muhammad. وَرَبُّكَ أَعْلَمُ Oh Jibreel, go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and your Lord knows best. فَسَلْهُ مَا يُبْكِيكَ Ask him what's causing you to cry, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَأَتَاهُ جِبْرِيلَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ فَسَأَلَهُ فَأَخْبَرَهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم بما قال. So he came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said أمتي أمتي my umma my umma فقال الله يا جبريل Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says O Jibreel اذهب إلى محمد go back to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم فقل له إنا سنرضيك في أمتك ولا نسوءك O Muhammad we will please you with your umma we will not disappoint you we will please you with your ummah. We will not disappoint you. That was the crying of the Prophet ﷺ. And that's why his one dua on the Day of Judgment is a dua of intercession for other than himself. It is the epitome of what a Prophet cries for. 
And subhanAllah, the ulama point to the fact that the Prophet wasallam, if you look at his crying when he was rejected by his uncle Abu Lahab, compared to his crying when he was trying to prompt his uncle Abu Talib to say, La ilaha illallah, the buka, the crying of the Prophet wasallam, with trying to save his uncle Abu Talib was far greater than any crying when his uncle Abu Lahab was humiliating him and harassing him. So it brings us to a question. Do you cry like an empath or do you cry like a narcissist? Do you cry like a worshiper or do you cry like a devil? The Prophet ﷺ who cried over the harm that was being inflicted on other than himself more than the harm that was being inflicted on him. The Prophet ﷺ who cried for the salvation of the same people that were causing him suffering in this world. That's our Prophet ﷺ. Dear brothers and sisters, we examine our hearts because now is a time where people express vulnerability. And vulnerability in and of itself is good. It's good to be vulnerable. But if some people express vulnerability only as a means of gaining sympathy so that they can escape accountability for their deeds and the consequences of their deeds, that's not positive. What makes you cry? What gives you hem? What gives you anxiety? What causes you to grieve? Think about it. And it's not something that you can answer to me, it's something between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if someone says, well, I don't cry at all, then soften your heart with the two things that are the opposite of what Iblis brings. And that is the recitation of the Qur'an, yatim. And the Prophet I'm saying to accompany the orphans, to accompany and engage with the people that are suffering. The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dhikrullah, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in private moments of solitude where you cry at the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the recitation of the greatest reminder which is the Qur'an and then for other than yourself whether it's the Uyghurs or our brothers and sisters in Palestine or wherever it may be you cry you actually bring yourself to cry and make dua for people soften your heart SubhanAllah, are we so hard with our hearts that we can cry watching a movie about fictional characters, but we can't cry watching the real life suffering of our brothers and sisters? That's a problem. Soften the heart with the recitation of the Qur'an. Take moments of solitude. Don't turn stuff off. No, and cry like a prophet, not like a devil. Don't be someone that grieves only when they lose out, but grieve for what others are missing as well. And let that drive your da'wah let that drive your spirit, let that drive your worship. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us those hearts and those eyes and those supplications. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from eyes that don't shed tears, from hearts that are not moved, and from supplications that are not answered. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allahumma khfir al-mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat. Al-hiyai minhum wal amwat innaka sami'un qareebun mujibu da'wat. Allahumma khfir lana wa rahamna. Wa'afu anna wa la tu'adhibna. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa inlam tahfir lana wa tarhamna. Lana kuunnana minal khasirin. Allahumma innaka afu wa kareemu tuhibbu al-afu wa fa'afu anna. اللهم اغفر لوالدينا رب ارحمهما كما ربونا صغارا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم انصر إخوانا المستضعفين في مشارك الأرض ومغاربها اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والكاذبين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا وإخواننا من بينهم سالمين عباد الله أن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعماء يزد لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة